Hello again. I had some requests to talk about Weatherby rifles, and I have a few Weatherbys, and I've had others over the years, so I thought probably I should say something about them. Weatherby's one of those names that everybody knows, like Cadillac, certainly one of the most, um, I don't want to say influential, but well-known American gun makers was Roy Weatherby. I never met the man, um, but anyway, um, there are no tricks, as I've said a few times on my videos, in physics or in gun making. Velocity in cartridges is the result of the amount of powder you're burning, which is dependent on the size of the case. Roy Weatherby decided that he wanted to market a line of rifles, or at least one rifle, that offered more velocity to the um, average shooter. And so he de developed a cartridge that was based on a Holland and Holland belted case, and I've got the 240 Weatherby on the table for you to look at, and you'll notice that at the back of the case there's a, um, a distinct line, and it's, it's not smooth, so it's not a rimmed cartridge, it's not a rimless cartridge, they call that a belted cartridge. That concept was developed by Holland and Holland. Roy Weatherby saw an opportunity to neck down some of these cartridges and in, make it possible for them to hold more powder and by burning more powder you can res, uh, cause um, higher velocities and the pressures of the Weatherby cartridges are slightly higher than, than uh, conventional cartridges and he, you can google you'll see there's the 270 Weatherby the 300 Weatherby 7 millimeter Weatherby the one that you've just looked at on the table was the 240, which is my favorite. Uh, not that it's the most powerful Weatherby cartridge, it isn't. And his line went all the way up to 460 Weatherby. So the concept was, he offered a line of cartridges that used bigger cases, burnt more powder at slightly higher pressures, and accomplished higher velocities. Now, everybody knows the higher the velocity, uh, the flatter the trajectory. And as you probably all also know, you can't cheat gravity. Everything falls at the same rate. But if you cover more ground because your velocity is higher, then it'll seem like you're cheating gravity, which you actually aren't. You're just getting further, faster. Anyhow, a lot of words about more or less nothing. Um, in order to market his cartridges, he first used, I think, Mauser actions. Then he might have used some Schultz and Larson actions. I think I had one of those. And then he developed the Mark V action, and that's what I thought I'd show you. So this is a great big action. And, um, you know, he obviously was familiar with Mauser rifles, and I have one on the table. Um, this is not the Mark V. This is the Weatherby Vanguard, which I'll show you in a second. And this is the Weatherby Mark V bolt. So you can see that it has three, six, nine locking lugs. And the locking lugs are recessed, meaning that in the case of the Vanguard, the, the locking lugs are of a greater diameter than the bolt body. On the Mark V, the bolt body is bigger. And um, the corresponding recesses in the receiver um, accept these, these locking lugs. And supposedly they all make contact with the recesses in the receiver and I'm sure especially now they can accomplish that and then these are gas relief ports in case of cartridge ruptures and it, it's a very flashy very well made um, quite a heavy action this I don't know what this bolt weighs but it's it's a big bolt and then the action itself is um, uh, also well made this particular one uh, made in USA. They were made in Japan for a while. Originally they were made in Germany and in collector's circles the uh, German ones seemed to change hands at a premium price. I never noticed much difference in the manufacturing quality of Weatherby's. I think they're all extremely well made rifles and actions. Um, so anyway, he shows up on the market with a line of cartridges that offers a little more velocity and uh, it, that's a that's a distinct advantage and then he offers the mark V action and to go along with it uh, quite a racy stock design 
So the idea behind the, this, uh, they call it kind of California stock design, is to get the cheek in line with a scoped rifle. And I, I, I put out one of my English rifles, and this is a typical English rifle stock design. And here we have the, the Weatherby. So you can see a raised Monte Carlo. And uh, the shoulder is roughly in the same position. And some people tell me that you feel recoil more with these. And some people say with those. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. From personal experience, it all depends on the cartridge and a whole bunch of other circumstances. But a lot of people like the Weatherby design. And his um, amazing marketing skills and persistence which you can read about in the Weatherby book, resulted in the success of Weatherby as a company. Um, the Mark V is not the cheapest action to manufacture. There's a lot to this action, and uh, it's quite a smooth running action. It has a typical release floor plate, which I noticed on this one is hard to release. Um, anyway, uh, that's a good thing, because this one is in 338 Lapua. I forgot to mention that. I decided I was reading all about these 338 Lapuas, so I better go out there and buy one. And I looked at, I don't know what I looked at, a Remington, I maybe looked at an Accuracy International, and then somebody said, what about this Weatherby Mark V? And I didn't even know the Mark V was offered in 338 Lapua, but here it is. So I forget what length this barrel is, 28 inches maybe, and you can see you get a muzzle brake, which is easily removable. And then you, if you don't want the muzzle brake, you can, there's a knurled uh, threaded cover. Uh, anyhow, so I took it to the range and the ballistics of the 338 Lapua are, are uh, formidable, even more impressive than the 340 Weatherby, which has been around for a long time. I hope I have that right. Uh, I'm not sure what can be accomplished with reloading. Uh, anyway, the 340 Weatherby, if it is behind the Lapua, it's not that far behind. But I was uh, pleasantly surprised with that muzzle brake, and it's not really a lightweight rifle. I, I, the, the recoil didn't bother me at all. Some people at the range commented about the muzzle blast. I guess there's a lot of powder coming out of that muzzle brake. But anyhow, so 338 Lapua, um, Weatherby Mark V, and of course the Lapua uh, just burns a lot of powder, and it's pushing a heavy bullet. But there's no like real magic to it. it it's, it's just a function of powder, pressure, and bullet weight. And the Mark V, of course, has no problem accommodating large cartridges. The 460 Weatherby is, is, is a vast cartridge. The 378 Weatherby is vast. And if you don't know Weatherby cartridges, it's probably not a bad idea to have a look at some of the velocities that are accomplished in the Weatherbys. For their time, they were very flat shooting. And um, especially if you're familiar mainly with American cartridges, if you go back, you know, to turn of the century, people were experimenting in Germany and other places already back then. And some of the cartridges that were available actually uh, from Vom Hof and um, outfits like that were as fast as the Weatherbees, but they weren't very common and they weren't well known. So Weatherby successfully popularized the idea of ultra velocity cartridges and the 257 is an extremely fast 25 caliber cartridge um, so is the 270 Weatherby I mean there are other cartridges now the WSM family of cartridges has come along um, I still like the longer cartridges the Weatherbys are good uh, there aren't really feeding problems with the shorter cartridges they make special actions to accommodate that but I just like the the longer old style cartridges because they're they're easily to, easy to handle and easy to build guns around. Uh, what else can I tell you about Weatherby's? Um, they're, um, they're they tend to be quite flashy. If you want a really impressive looking rifle, especially for people that don't know all that much about rifles, which doesn't sound very good, but uh, just get a Weatherby Mark V with the gloss finish on the walnut stock. They usually have excellent Clairol walnut. Um, I mean, those are very nice looking rifles. Uh, well, on the other hand, um, if you go to the English rifle, it's a much uh, less flashy firearm, understated. It probably can do 
this is an 8x68 so there's no shortage of horsepower there but it's you know it's lacking the Monte Carlo uh, stock in fact the stock on this particular rifle looks rather plain and I don't have a Mark V with the wood stock. Sorry about that. I should have put one on the table. Uh, but somehow I got stuck on this Lapua just because I was so impressed by it. And as far as accuracy, Weatherbees are excellent. So uh, hopefully that's enough said about the, the um, Mark V action. And if you're picking up a Weatherbee, you'll see on it somewhere um, inscribed Mark V. I don't know if the camera can pick that up but it's, it's always there. And then um, either Roy Weatherby or his son uh, made a great decision and they thought, well, maybe we should offer a line of cartridges that isn't, uh, of uh, rifles that isn't as expensive as the Mark V. And so they came up with um, the, the Vanguard. And the, these two rifles are Vanguards. And as I showed you before, the bolt is... Um, you know, it doesn't have a claw extractor, but it's a typical Mauser action, modified Mauser, and it's made in Japan. These are great rifles. Uh, one of the best values on the market, maybe the best value on the market. This one is in 240, I think. This one's in 6.5 Creedmoor. And I bought them because of the cartridges and I didn't have any Vanguards around. I took them to the range and uh, the usual story exceptional accuracy actually unbelievable accuracy out of the 240 weatherby uh, not many people buy the 240 because it's kind of a uh, very unique cartridge and not very common maybe a little expensive uh, on the other hand one lives uh, once so I, I like the 240 best and um, you can't go wrong with the vanguard it's it's exceptional uh, it handles well now these are the synthetic models and maybe we can um, you know, get an image of the inscription on the on the uh, barrel 240, whether it be Vanguard, and these are just Weaver bases. Quite often, I'll just put Weaver. Of course, there are better systems available. Well, I don't know if they're better, more expensive. I've never had any problem with these Weaver bases, and so that's what you see on there. And the other one is the same. It's a 6.5 Creedmoor. So I hope I'm not understating. Um, the importance of Weatherby rifles, they did make a difference because the people that bought them were thinking about velocity and trajectory and the potential for long-range um, hunting, uh, which now is even more popular. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's almost scientific how some of the uh, folks that I know uh, go hunting. I, I haven't really mastered that yet. They sit with tables and trajectories and bipods and, and, and can do things at six, seven, and 800 yards, which, which is a, a technical challenge. Um, on the other hand, people like me are walking around the woods hoping to, to either get close enough to something, maybe 100 yards or 200 yards, sometimes with iron sights, which is better, I think, depends you know, on what book you like to read. But um, these rifles can accomplish those amazing shots. And uh, this one in 338 Lapua, I know, I know it can. I've seen what it can do at two and 300 yards, which is um, actually half or less than half the uh, distance capability of the Lapua. Um, so that's, uh, that's probably about it on the Weatherby. So you Weatherby fans, I hope I, I did justice to what really is a remarkable line of cartridges and guns or rifles and actions and a remarkable man. I mean, if you think about going up against the big manufacturers um, as he did fearlessly and actually winning and, and still being around today, it's an accomplishment for anybody. So uh, I hope I did a good job. Thanks for watching.